Hello and welcome to the Hellraiser blog. Ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed today's blog, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, share it about. Love growing the Hellraiser boxing YouTube family. Um, okay, so the fight I'm going to look at today, massive fight. One of the biggest fights um, we'll see any British fighter in for the, the whole year. Josh Taylor versus Jose Carlos Ramirez for the undisputed four titles on the line. All four major titles on the line for this fight. So this is a massive, massive fight at super lightweight, uh, junior welterweight for any American viewers. So Josh Taylor from Scotland, uh, Southpaw, height of five foot ten, with a reach of six nine and a half inches, against Jose Carlos Ramirez, same height, five foot ten, but a reach of seventy two point five inches. Um, that reach advantage may or may not play a significant role in this fight I'll go into that in a second but first let's go into the fight as a little bit I don't know if you've seen Josh Taylor if you're British you almost certainly would have seen him boxing very classy boxer uh, I actually think he, he's, he's actually I, I prefer it when he's a bit more upright he seems to um, uh, I, I sometimes feel as if he sees himself as a bigger puncher than what he actually naturally is and that causes him to sort of um to lean in a little bit, to uh, engage too early. Um, I think he's a very skilled guy. I think he can um, actually do very well uh, keeping things long, maybe for a bit longer, especially in, in this fight. And I think his last fight against Regis Progre, which to view that fight was brilliant. Um, it was an absolute barn burner. They uh, completely went to town on each other. And it made for very exciting viewing. Um, but I mean, if you've seen the state of Taylor's uh, face at the end of the fight, you'd think, well, he's not going to have a very long career if he keeps having many fights like that. Um, it, it, right. As I just mentioned, Taylor seems to engage, uh, for me, too willingly. And when he fought Progre, he he actually engages with Progre early in the fight, uh, often standing for me, too close and trading. Um, and Progre was getting the better of it. The first half of the fight I had Progre in front. Um, I actually thought that Taylor deserved to win the fight. He did win the fight, but he deserved to win the fight. Some people thought that Progre should have got the decision. I didn't. I thought Taylor did very well in the first half um, of the fight um, to sort of keep up with Progre because he, he I mean Progre is the sort of guy you really don't want to be standing right in front of and, and sort of trading um, and it felt like Taylor was sort of trying to prove his machismo a little bit too much and I think that involved too much risk taking and um, another day could have gone badly wrong for him I had him behind on points at the halfway stage but um it may have been tactically, it may have been a good thing because it drew Progre, I think, into the mindset of, right, he wants to have a fight, he wants to stand with me, he wants to um, have a, 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 a trading match, see who can sort of knock each other out quickest. Um, and once Progre's mind was set on, on launching these big shots halfway through the fight, maybe because he tired, maybe because he realised, you know, that there's an easier way to beat this guy. Some guys, you have to stand with them and fight. Other guys, you have to outskill them. And it felt like halfway through the fight, he sort of switches tactics. He um, goes more upright and, and uses more straight punches. Uh, one thing that I really like about Josh Taylor is that even when he's at close range, he still sticks to straight punches. He, he doesn't, uh, like the... the usual habit of fighters when they're in close is to start winging the, the, the hooks which is good when, when you can do it but Josh Taylor is actually very accurate and very composed even at, at, at close range when the opponent is winging the, the, the wide punches he beats them to the punch because obviously the, the straight line is quicker than hooking it around the outside so Taylor um, used his brain in the fight with Pro Gray in, in what was an absolute war it was a, I mean it was very exciting to watch, but I think Taylor could have won it. Uh, Josh Taylor could have won that more easily if he stuck to his boxing earlier in the fight. Again, if he hadn't have 
committed physically in the way that he did, maybe Progre himself wouldn't have been so blatant in, in the clubbing punches that he was throwing Taylor's way. The thing was that Progre in the second half of the fight seemed very tired and wasn't able to adjust his tactics to suit what uh, Taylor was then doing to him. Um, he Progre just kept doing more of the same and trying harder, but as he was getting more and more tired, he was slowing down, getting more clumsy and getting beat to the punch by Taylor. So, Jose Carlos Ramirez got two of the world titles, same as uh, Josh Taylor has two of the world titles, and R Ramirez is a brilliant fighter. Um, I think there might be a slight edge to, to Taylor, and he's slightly more diverse in his the, the, the tactics. Ramirez is not exactly one-dimensional, but it's all about the left hook, and mainly the left hook to the body. Um, when he throws things that are not the left hook or the left hook to the body, it's normally to set up the left hook to the body. Um, one thing I really like about R Ramirez that I've noticed is he, he, he has this absolutely very destructive left hook to the body, which has taken out a lot of opponents, and even the opponents that he doesn't take out the left hook to the body, once he's connected with that left hook to the body, they're then like sitting ducks for whatever punch he's going to throw next. He actually has a, a good straight right hand as well, um, but like I say, the right hand on its own is not that spectacular. Uh, when he hits his opponents with the left hook to the body, they, they seem like crippled from it. And then he can take the, the, the time to throw like the right hand, which he has stopped people with as well. So the, the tactics for the fight, for Ramirez, I think 100%, I know what he's going to do. He's going to come and he's going to try and land that left hook. And he's going to work everything off that left hook, whether it's more left hooks to the body, sometimes varying it to the chin. One thing I really like with Ramirez is that uh, he throws a left hook, left hook, everything's centred around landing the left hook, and occasionally he brings a left hand, an uppercut up, uh, like Povetkin versus Dillian White in their first fight. He, he, he gets the opponent accustomed, and why that's important, because then it brings the elbows, if you're trying to protect your body, the elbows settle here. So any wide shots coming are going to land and you catch them there. But if you become so accustomed to the shots coming around the outside that your hands are there, and then suddenly one comes up the middle, um, by surprise, that can be... And, and Ramirez is a master at that because he knows that this left hook, from the moment the first one lands in the body, the opponent, the card is marked, and he's going to be really careful and bring his hand. And then he can surprise them with a left uppercut through the middle. And... Um, Taylor, who can be a little bit upright, might find that a problem in this fight. Like I say, what I really like about Taylor is that even inside, at close range, where most fighters tend to start swinging and, and, and launching a lot of leverage into to hard punches, sharp punches, um, he just stays composed. Boom, ice cold, and boom, just pops the jab out. Um, he's got a very good jab, very accurate, and, and looks very snappy as well. And um, I think that could be key to him winning this fight. If he can keep it at long range, which I have hesitance in, in saying because generally he, he tends to um, be very happy to engage, almost as if he feels like if he doesn't engage then that's showing that he's, he's not a, a, a hard case or he's not as tough as he wants people to, to sort of realise he is. He is a tough guy. But for me, if he wants to have a long career, if he wants to impress me I'll be more impressed if, if he just keeps it at long range and uses his feet he's got he's very good on his feet but he's fast he's light on his feet he's, he's very well balanced and coordinated but he, he tends to throw that away in favor of toughing it out and against someone like Jose Lu <laughs> Luis R Carlos Ramirez you, you don't really want that kind of fight and if he turns it into that kind of fight, I think he could have a very, very tough night's work. I mean, Taylor, for me, is the better pure boxer. Um, but he likes to stand and trade. Um, look, R Ramirez has got a lower KO percentage, but he may actually prove to be the harder puncher in this fight. And I think if, if Taylor stands with him, I think he's making a mistake. I think he's taking a much bigger chance of getting beaten. Um, if he purely tries to box him, I think I fancy him to have enough nows to, to outbox uh, Ramirez. Um, it could be. I mean, it's a big risk going to America to fight. I think that's a risk. And Taylor, quite often, I've noticed at the end of rounds, he throws like a late shot, 
like the bell goes and it's just a little bit too late for it to be by chance. It, for me, it feels like he's doing it um, to get an edge, to get that extra little um, bit of damage to the opponent. But he's always boxed at home, Taylor, and now he's going to fight an American guy in America. Uh, well, Mexican in, in sort of Mexican-American. Um, he won't get away with those late punches and it could cost him points at the end of the round. And this could be a very close fight. And I, I, I weigh that into the equation because if it's a close fight, which would have been a draw, but he gave a point away because of a sloppy late punch, that could uh, that could be the turning point of the scorecards. And then the fight, he could lose the fight or draw the fight um, instead of win it because of that. Um, so I hope we're going to see disciplined Taylor at the end of the rounds with no sloppy late punches and also disciplined in that he'll stick to his boxing and use what he's got, the skills that he's got that are incredibly uh, rare, which are the, the movement and the composure that he has and, and that he has very, very good basic skills, you know, very good jab. Um, he's a southpaw. He tends sometimes to leave himself open on, on the right side of his body and... That worries me a little bit against this uh, as a Lewis Ramirez because his favourite punch is the left hook to the body. Um, against Regis Progre, he was open and he got caught to the, the, the body and I think Ramirez is a harder puncher than Progre. Um, and, and also R Ramirez has a little bit more um, a variety in his arsenal than Progre, which in the second half of the fight could mean uh, even harder. And then it, it was a brutal fight, the Progre fight for... Uh, for Josh Taylor, it says something that so quickly after that fight he's going into another big, big, big test. Um, for me, it, it revolves around whether Taylor can stay disciplined. That will be pivotal to the outcome. If, if Josh Taylor stays pivotal, I fancy him to win on points here. Um, I think he can do a lot of damage to R R Ramirez. Ramirez can do a lot of damage to him too, but I think um, we'll probably see... Um, well, not... Uh, Look, this this is not a fight where I feel is really heavily slanted one way or the other. This is this is on a knife edge. This is a very close fight. But I just fancy Josh Taylor to go and nick it. Um, I just fancy him to to edge it. I hope he uses his skill early. If he doesn't use it early, I think he'll definitely be forced to use it in the second half of the fight because um, Ramirez isn't really the sort of guy that you want to be trying to walk through. I think yeah, get his respect, uh, show him that he can't walk through you, but. There's no need to go and prove yourself because, um, you know, we want to see these guys progress and, and move on through the ranks. And, you know, I think they both express that they want to then go up to, to, to welterweight and, and conquer everything. It shows you something of their ambition. They're already looking beyond winning the four belts. Um, but like I say, I, I think um, we see uh, Josh Taylor win on points. I think it will be close. I think he'll have some very hairy moments on, on route. But in the end, he, he'll prove victorious. Um, guys, thank you very much for watching the Hellraiser blog. Please hit the subscribe button and I hope to see you again very soon on the Hellraiser Boxing YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, guys. See you again soon. Bye-bye. Tick, tick, tick.